These um, Chinese imported uh, thermal pump pool heaters, they were sold under various different brands and names. This one happens to be an Orlux. Um, they were also called Ecolo. The little cover came off the LCD so you can't see it, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn the circulation pump on as well as um, the power to the pump so you can see that the error code that it displays. So we turn it on and uh, the display is just giving us a blank stare. Um, based on any documentation that I can find, this is a communication error between the control circuitry and um, the keypad or something. I, I honestly have no idea. But here's some sticker information. And I've already pulled this unit apart, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what I found inside. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the power to this and uh, shut off the circulation pump. Um, basically, the top cover comes off with these screws around here and then we'll be able to lift off the cover. Okay, so I've removed the screws for the cover, and just before that, I want to show you how this comes out. It just kind of press-fitted in there, and um, this connection doesn't actually appear to come out, but um, I've had a peek at the circuit board itself. This is the back side, this is the front side, and I can see that there's this kind of um, button cell battery sort of thing there. I thought that was a capacitor, but that didn't seem to be the case. Um, I don't think that's causing any problems. You can see it just appears to be two button cell batteries. They're a little bit swollen. Um, but as I say, this is just a dumb little keypad. It doesn't it doesn't really do very much. So that just sits in there like that and it snaps in. I think there was two clips, but um, the person who was here before me probably broke those. And as I say, there's a cover piece that goes on here and I gave that to the homeowner to take inside because it needs to be reglued. Anyway, so then we have access to this cover over here, and we can see that the um, coil and the compressor is in here, and then there's this access to some more components, and we'll remove those screws and lift this cover. Okay, so now we have access to the electronics beneath, and the diagram Oops, it was actually here. So that's nice. And then we can see um, we have the high voltage uh, mains that comes in here. There's a contactor, and then this is the low voltage control circuitry. And again, just looking at this, what, what can we see that's possibly wrong? Well, there's a capacitor nestled right in there that looks kind of swollen. and. We have um, a fuse over here. I, I should also mention that the person who was here before me did jumper this and uh, the unit turns on absolutely no problem. So one one um, solution that was suggested to the homeowner was simply put a toggle switch to turn the thing on and off um, because this component seems to be difficult to track down, but I'm sure with some research I can find it. Uh, regardless, I want to try the simplest and uh, least expensive thing first, which is to just simply try and replace that capacitor and uh, we'll see what happens. So as you mentioned before actually touching anything in here, even though that I do see that the breaker is off and there's the disconnect right next to the equipment, um, I'm going to test with a um, non-contact voltage tester to make sure uh, that there is actually indeed no mains voltage. You should also be taking many pictures of all of these connections here before messing with it for reference of what goes where, but I'm actually going to try and do this right on the spot and just pop out this board and uh, desolder the capacitor and put one in with a new value. I brought my kit of capacitors and my soldering iron. I'm just going to do it right here. It's only going to take a couple minutes versus disconnecting this, bringing it home, and then bringing it all the way back. Um, so we can see that the AC mains is totally disconnected. We do have a start capacitor here, which um, they can contain a charge, so you, you do want to be careful around those. Okay, so I've just released those uh, mounting studs here, and we have access to the board, and that's really all I need. To, uh, to gain access to that capacitor. You can see how really crusty this is and how yellowed all these contacts are. It's from a tremendous amount of heat buildup in here. And you can see that these have crisped nicely. So we're gonna have to be careful when desoldering that. And uh, this capacitor appears to be 25 volts at a thousand microfarads. I don't know if we can see that in there. And I did bring my capacitance tester just to actually test it and see if it's gone bad, but I do have Quite a few of them here, so I should have one of those. So 
So here's a capacitor and we can actually just test it to make sure it's actually good and see that it's within specification. That's actually really close to, um, to its rating of a thousand microfarads, 25 volts. So we'll go ahead and pop that in and uh, see what happens. Okay, so here's that capacitor. You can see it's totally shat itself right out the bottom. It's completely fucked. And now I've got the new one in there. Just like so. Tried to clean up those contacts a little bit. So I'm gonna pop this board in and um, just reconnect power to the heater and uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so I heard a relay click on and we are no longer getting the error code. We are getting the current temperature of the pool. The fan is running. And it appears that that has solved the communication error um, with the low voltage control circuitry. I'm going to get the panel from the homeowner there just so I can see the buttons and try and set the temperature of the pool. Okay, the compressor is kicked on. We've set the temperature of the pool. And that appears to solve the problem. <laughs> 